It's a general election that's been closely watched around the world, one in which the stakes are higher than ever before. On March 4th, five years after the worst political crisis in the country's history, Kenyans will vote for MPs, governors, senators, and a new president to replace Mwai Kibaki. The front runners for the top job are Uhuru Kenyatta, the son of Kenya's first president, who, along with his running mate, William Ruto, is charged with crimes against humanity by the ICC for his role in the post-election violence of 2007. And Raila Odinga, the prime minister who was defeated in the last election amid charges of rigging, turned tribe against tribe in a shocking explosion of violence that left more than 1,200 dead. Raila Odinga is widely seen to have won the last election but had to settle for the lesser job of prime minister in the coalition government following the disputed vote. Now he's got another chance, but will third time be lucky? Odinga says Kenya has turned the page on the bloodshed of five years ago. But in what some see as a flashback to the horrors of 2007 and 2008, inter-ethnic violence and killings are on the rise. And what about ambitious land and police reforms? The violence and chaos that followed the last elections leave no doubt they are necessary, but they have yet to be pushed through. Can Kenya overcome its divisive ethnic politics and maintain its status as an African powerhouse? On this edition of Talk to Al Jazeera, we sit down with Prime Minister and Presidential Candidate Raila Odinga. Raila Odinga, thank you very much for talking to Al Jazeera. No, thank you. Um, I'm happy to talk to Al Jazeera once again. You've waited a long time to be the president of Kenya, and because of your age, this might be, in fact, your last opportunity. So how confident are you that you'll be successful this time, and perhaps most importantly, that democracy will be respected in Kenya? As you know, that I was a candidate uh, twice before. Uh, the last time, um, as you know, uh, what happened, um, eventually they said that they didn't know who won, although I know myself uh, who won the elections. But I, I decided that Kenya was more important than an individual called Raid Odinga. And hence, the need to compromise and to make the country move forward. We didn't want to see too much bloodshed in our country. Um, what we have done, uh, which makes this time different from last time, is that we have uh, carried out very comprehensive reforms. We now have a new constitution we didn't have. We have a new electoral commission, new electoral laws. We have carried out reforms in the judiciary, still ongoing but mm. fairly fundamental. Uh, and, and also the police reforms are also underway. So you think your chances are better this time around? I, I think so, that the, the chances are better. I think that um, uh, the manipulation that happened last time may not be repeated this time around. But as you know, Mr. Prime Minister, uh, two men who face trial at the International Criminal Court stand between you and the realization of your long-time ambition. And many people believe that Uhuru Kenyatta and William Ruto have a good chance to defeat you because they have the numbers, the ethnic numbers on their side. What does that say about Kenya and Kenyan politics? Well, um, I, I really don't want to dwell on the ICC case um, because it is there. And um, um, basically, um, the ruling has been that there are uh, presumed to be innocent until they are proved guilty uh, through the due process. And uh, being my competitors, um, I really don't want to go beyond that point. But if you are elected, one of the questions, the first questions that you have to address is whether or not to hand over Uhuru Kenyatta and uh, William Ruto to the International Criminal Court at The Hague, should they refuse to cooperate. So will you hand them over if you had, if you had to? 
We have signed an agreement with the ICC that we will uh, cooperate with the ICC. Uh, and I want to leave it at that point. So but you will uh, hand them over to the ICC? I have Should said they not that cooperate? I will apply to have the cases referred back to Kenya. So and you I won't hand them over then? No. I want to say we will cross that bridge when we reach it. Your people, the Luo people, now feel that now is Raila Odinga's turn. Now it's your time to get to the presidency. If, let's say, and we're speaking hypothetically, of course, uh, Kenyatta and Ruto were to make it to the top, will your people accept the outcome of the vote? Will they accept another Raila Odinga defeat? No, s certainly. I mean, uh, my people uh, are democratic. They will re un understand it because Kenyatta, will they? Kenyatta and, will they? They, they, Kenyatta's and Ruto's communities put together only represent 30% of this country's population. There is still 70%. Yes. Indeed, the opinion polls show that you are in the lead. Um, again, you know, we're speaking here hypothetically, but let, let me just ask you this. I mean, your people fanatically support you, Raila Odinga. They've always been there for you through the hard times, and they feel that now is your turn, now is your time. It is difficult to foresee them accepting another defeat if that was the case. It's not, it's not true. My people have never uh, 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 say, say the rioted um, as a result of um, a fair they defeat. They didn't in 2007, the, 2008? The, the 2007, 2008, there was a national protest at uh, the kind of rigging that uh, took place. And it was national. It was not uh, regional. It was not confined to any particular region of this country. But the violence was largely along tribal lines. No, that is not true. Not true at all. Not along tribal lines. Uh, people were being beaten up here by the police. Really? The so the police example, were, re were responsible? Yeah. In Kisumu, for example, people were being shot mm. and killed by the police. Mm. But we saw the Kikuyus turning on the, the Luos and, and, you no, know. No, 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 not the Kikuyus. That was an organized gang, Mungiki, who were hired by? by politicians. So who? They know themselves. Okay, so just coming back to uh, the people suspected of involvement in the 2007-2008 election uh, of violence. They are those who say that you, Mr. Prime Minister, were also to some degree responsible because you called for mass action and, you know, the youth that turned around uh, after your call for, for mass action and committed murder in your name, you know, they went around allegedly killing Kikuyus and that you didn't stop the mobilization, you didn't stop the call for mass action, and that therefore you're in some way guilty of abating crime and that sh you should be also held responsible. What do you say to that? The statement that I made during all that period of mayhem was basically to call for um, a, a peaceful mm. demonstration. But was, Pe that, was that clear to your supporters? When you call for mass action, what does that mean? Not mass action. I asked my people to come out and carry out peaceful demonstrations. Did you specifically call on peaceful demonstrations? Yes, and it's on record. You can replay the tapes. I even asked them mm. to carry the white handkerchief as a sign of peace, uh, that they should not destroy any property, they should not attack any individual, but they should demonstrate peacefully, mm. which is actually guaranteed by our constitution. Yeah. So it was nothing illegal, it was nothing criminal. Right. Uh, but then your supporters went... Uh, they went came out yes. to demonstrate. Then the authorities responded by shooting. There was an order of shoot to kill that was established uh, by the, through the investigations of, of, of Justice Waki. So the mayhem started as a result of the reaction of the authorities. Mm -hmm. That's when people now began to run and in the stampede 
a lot of properties was destroyed. But they, they were, there was more than stampede, Mr. Prime Minister. On January 1st, 2008, uh, the Kiamba Church in Eldoret was set on fire. The church where many Kikuyu people had sought refuge was set on fire. Women and children were burned to death. Why didn't you call on your supporters to stop the violence then? I don't know where you get the, the view that those were my supporters. I, I want to deny that those were my, my supporters. My su I would never have, I mean, none of my supporters would never have done So who was like behind that. the violence in that you, specific you see, incident? investigations were carried out and people were arrested, were charged with that incident, were tried and were eventually acquitted by the courts uh, for lack of evidence. Um, I, I understand that the ICC now say that they have fresh evidence. So the matter would then be subjudice uh, at this moment. Mm. So I would really not want to co comment further. The offences that Ruto, William Ruto, has been charged with by the ICC, and just to name some of them, murder, deportation, forcible transportation of a population, torture, persecution. He's, of course, innocent until proven guilty of these charges. But many people find it hard to believe that these offences could have been committed without your knowledge, Raila Odinga. Ocampo, the former prosecutor of the ICC, says that William Ruto began planning a year before the elections to attack supporters of, of the governing party. Could he really have masterminded all that he's been accused of without your knowledge, Mr. Prime Minister? No, you see, I mean... Uh First, I want to be very categorical that I have had no knowledge and planning of any form of violence. But you need to know that uh, William Ruto was actually my competitor until after the nominations, which were actually carried out in uh, September uh, mm. of uh, 2007. So he only became allies with William Ruto from but October. But he was, he was your ally. Why should your lieutenant at the time be on trial and not you? Well, what I'm trying to say is that you're talking about something a year before. Uh, by that time, we were not allies. So you didn't know? I didn't know. And um, I want to give him the benefit of doubt because he, he has actually denied the charges. And uh, his guilt or otherwise will just be proved uh, through the due process. Do you think his alliance with uh, Kenyatta is one of convenience, perhaps, to, to escape the ICC? Maybe, maybe not. You know, they were together even in 2002 um, against Kibaki. He, Ruto was Kenyatta's uh, chief campaigner, um, uh, together with um, Salem Davadi. So um, uh, I don't think that is just a coincidence. Right. But it, it, it could also be seen a, as an alliance to have the numbers because between the two of them, they represent two of Kenya's biggest tribes. And we know that Kenya still votes along tribal lines. If you look at uh, the opinion polls which have been carried out for the last five years, I have all the time scored more than 30 percent uh, in terms of appro approval rating in the country. My community by the last uh, population census is only 11 percent of the Kenyan population. Uh, so I think it is wrong for anybody to make an assumption that if somebody is running uh, uh, from a particular community that he will get the support of all members of his community. Let's move on to the issue of ethnicity now and, and we talked about this uh, a little bit. Uh, the ethnic tensions influenced by competition for high resources are still sadly uh, very high I in Kenya. Over the last few months we've seen tensions, we've seen violence in Tana River and so on. And this violence happens a few months before the elections, doesn't skilled women and children, and your government appears incapable of addressing this issue. Why is that? Well, um, uh, it is very unfortunate that uh, this kind of violence has once again mas manifested itself um, just uh, uh, before elections or in the election year. Um, this is, the, but the kind of violence in this region is something that has been there for some time before. 
the inter, inter ethnic um, strife, uh, cattle rustling, for example, mm. or uh, uh, competition for grazing la rights and, and so on and so forth. But the issue is sometimes confounded by the involvement of politicians. Because the politicians have been fueling some of this violence. Yeah, yes. So what have your government? What has your government done to 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 defuse these tensions, defuse the tribal animosity, and hold politicians accountable? The government, of course, has moved in by force, forcefully, and has deployed, for example, um, the general service unit uh, uh, police to try to disarm some of these uh, politicians and some of these militia who have been used in these skirmishes. Mm. Um, in politicians have been arrested. Um, and some people have been actually charged in a court of law. I, I just want to mention a, a report on this. A recent report that came out claims that the arms, some of the bandits and cattle rustlers uh, used in, in Turkana or, or Samburu and other, uh, and other areas are in fact ammunition that was initially imported for the Kenyan security forces. H how does this happen? How do you explain this? No, that, that, that is why we actually are carrying out reforms of our security forces because it is one of the weak points which were identified during that negotiations uh, for, uh, for b before the accord was signed, mm. that uh, the security forces, particularly the police, were uh, uh, fundamentally um, uh, uh, incoherent, that the police force uh, decayed so, f so s substantially that it required a complete overhaul. Uh, and that's the reason why the police reform process is ongoing. So this reform, you have will help us to revamp our police and also to retool it. Well, let's talk about your record because uh, this is something that I want to touch on. You've prided yourself, Mr. Prime Minister, as being Mr. Clean, a, a crusader uh, against corruption. A and yet corruption remains rife in Kenya. Two of the biggest corruption scandals in the last five years happened under your administration. I'm thinking here of the May scandal, the 15 billion a shilling youth for uh, jobs for youth scandal. So what have you done concretely to tackle corruption when there still seems to be a lot of corruption going on in, in Kenya under your administration? I would like to say that uh, corruption is something that needs to be tackled through strong institutions and uh, a change of culture. Um, but, but let me just correct you here there. The so-called youth uh, fund uh, scandal is a, is a scandal that never was. The World Bank carried out an investigation. Mm. That report... But the May it, scandal it, happened. The May scandal happened. I actually suspended a minister uh, because of May scandal together with the education fund scandal. Mm -hmm. But no one uh, has gone to jail. And but you remember that my suspension was countermanded by the president and reinstated the, the ministers. Right. Um, uh, if, uh, so what, are the, you saying the, the, that Kibaki has made it impossible for you to fight corruption? Um, not saying. The coalition arrangement has, been, uh, has made it very difficult to fight corruption because um, suspects usually use the excuse of the, of the coalition. Oh, I'm being targeted merely because I'm a member of this side of the coalition. So um, that way the, the, they actually take cover. The people of Kenya, Mr. Prime Minister, are extremely cynical about the way Kenyan politicians behave. Kenyan parliamentarians are some of the best paid in the world. $150,000 a year if you add the benefits and the perks. And yet the average Kenyan earns less than $2 a day. How do you change that culture? I was one of the first to protest. I was also one of those who came out and said members of parliament should pay taxes. Mm -hmm. And I went myself personally with my check and paid taxes. But this has been going on Kenyan for decades revenue, and decades. Revenue uh, commission. So uh, what I'm saying is that we need to change all this. Right. And I've said that uh, when I'm elected the president, I will lead by example. 
You will? By reducing the paycheck of the presidency to, so that the rest can actually follow that example. Mm. But wh wh when you say wh wh when you're elected, if you're elected president. Not if, when. <laughs> well, in my case, I'll say if you're elected president, you won't also eat, as they say colloquially? No, e eating, everybody eats. No, you know but, what I mean. But um, <laughs> not through corruption. I will uh, uh, be satisfied with a decent remuneration that I will be given as a public service. What about the people around you who feel that it's now their time, their turn to eat? Everyone is on notice that if you try to do this, you will not only go home, but severe action will be taken against you. I believe very strongly that if you take decisive action uh, as an example uh, against people who are around you, then the rest will actually take the cue. Mm. Uh, and this is what I intend to do. All right, so you say you'll tackle corruption. What about the land issue? The, the, it's, it's a main source, of course, of, of tribal dispute. And the Constitution made provisions to address the land issue. Better distribution, but it was also ambiguous as what would happen to the land. So if you're elected, will you take on this land issue? Will land barons, including former President Daniel Arap Moy, the Kenyatta family, the multinationals, will they have to put their land on the table under your administration? I believe that land as a factor of production and wealth creation need to be made accessible and available to people who want to use it mm -hmm. for the purposes of wealth creation. But will you take back the land from the Kenyatta family, for instance? We instance? will just stop the issue of land speculation. Uh, which actually is working against economic development of this country. So people who need land for production need to have access to it. It is not right that people should be holding large tracts of land which they are not using when others are killing each other over half an acre, one acre of land. Mm. So, but, but having said that, we will protect and defend the sanctity of property. So people who own land legally will have, have no fear in our government, will protect their rights. Kenya is a country with the ambition to be a, a dominant regional player. Kenyan troops have committed in Somalia, but the more Kenya commits to the fighting, to the conflict in Somalia, and the greater the risk that this conflict will then move to Kenya. We've seen a number of attacks recently in Nairobi's Isli district, for instance. Was it wise for the Kenyan government to commit to such a major intervention? No, definitely. This was a, a decision that was taken collectively in the Security Council and in the best national interest. But were Kenyan people fully behind this major commitment in Somalia? Certainly, yes. We remember that the matter was taken to Parliament. Mm. Parliament debated and fully approved uh, the involvement of Kenyan troops in Somalia. Because, as you know, there were already a lot of attacks across the border. Uh, we know that there will always be attempt by the international terrorism to try to exploit the economic situations in the country. Okay. We will resist them. What do you respond to those who accuse you of being a puppet of the West, that you're out to please foreign countries at the expense of Kenya's interests? I say uh, nothing, of course, could be further from the truth. I am a Pan-Africanist. I believe very strongly in the ability of the people of Africa to develop Africa. And I have said that our relationship with uh, any other part of the world uh, must be in the best interest of Africa. So I am not a puppet, and I can never be a puppet either of the West or of the East. I am a true Pan-Africanist who believes in our own ability to do things. Those who are talking about puppets are basically apologists. Let us do what is in the best interest of Africa. This is what I stand for. Prime Minister Raila Odinga, thank you very much for talking to Antizu. Thank you. Thank you very much.